jumping into it. All Saints Day. What does that even mean? Luke is reminding us that the kingdom of, that Jesus preached and lived was all about a glorious, uproarious, absurd generosity. And a prayer for All Saints Day echoes that theme. In Jesus Christ our Lord, you have received us as your children, made us citizens of your kingdom, and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. But it's that letter to the people, that letter to the church, to the saints at Ephesus, that talks about why we want to live there too, why we want to be citizens who have a kingdom that is ruled by Jesus. And I did say kingdom instead of kingdom because we're kin. Jesus isn't the kind of king that humans expect. The two story headings that fit into this epistle reading are titled The Inheritance and the Spirit. I knew that was going to happen. And The Knowing Power of the King. For a lot of us, I think, the thought of inheritance sounds like money or something that can be easily converted into money. But not so in the ancient world. In the time the church of Ephesus is formed, the world is about 15 or 20 years after Jesus has been crucified. It's still a world where the families who lived with and knew Jesus have deep and abiding roots in the Jewish faith, a faith that says land is valuable and land is what is given generation to generation as an inheritance. The Jewish people have shared stories of that land so much so that we also know they are searching for a place, reaching for a place, an absurdly ideal place, flowing with milk and honey. So how do we get there? How do we partake in that ideal? The Jewish people followed a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Wandering, sure, but it was easy to see and feel the presence of God among and between them. I imagine it was weird to zigzag, wander, wonder, but still follow that symbol of God. The people of Exodus trusted and followed. And because they faithfully believed that they would stop at a promised land, they continued to go. Our own inheritance for being God's own people. It makes you wonder, what if there was this cloud in the daytime and this pillar of fire at night? Would you follow? If Trinity Church said, we're going to get rid of this building and just start walking, who's with us? Kind of scary. But we are God's family. And do we trust that God will lead us to wherever this next land building might be? That inheritance is a sense of power and pride and certainly an excellent, excellent reason to continue wandering. But it's also the power of God, not us. The strength to ask people to do what needs to be done to help the whole community. The Jewish people were waiting for a Messiah, but in this letter, Paul is talking to an audience of Christ followers, people who believed the Messiah had come, people who don't have to wander away from their buildings anymore a people who recognized power because they lived in Ephesus, the center of political power, 
religious power, social power, civic power, and they all fought to be the best, to have the most control. And Paul reminds them, and us, that God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places. If I ask you today to tell me what the promised land is, would you tell me it's heaven? What if I tell you instead what Paul told the Ephesians? That we should set our hope on Christ. A risen Christ. That is our promised land. This world, the whole world, once it's been generously redeemed by the power of Christ. We don't have to wander to find God. God found us and helped us build a place to stay together as community. Jesus never leaves us alone. He ascended into heaven and is seated there in power. But Jesus gifted us the Holy Spirit to act as our guide by day and by night. All we have to do is follow the weird zigzags, the dead ends, the one-way streets, the unmarked pathways. Simple. But that's why we need each other, you saints of God. Why we need to gather together in good times and bad, to share times of morning prayer and times of Eucharist, times of praise and times of tears. In the collect for the diocese, we pray for all clergy and all our people. That's where this sermon started, that one word, our. All and our. I heard that one word louder than all the others, our people. That's what a saint is, a member of God's inheritance, we claim one another as living testimonies of God's grace and favor. It's an ancient truth that we still profess today and still memorialize, especially during All Saints Day. And this day is so important for us to remember that we transferred it over. The actual All Saints Day was November 1st, and we did celebrate there were people in this building praying for you on November 1st. Today is November 6th, and again, we celebrate the people of the kingdom of God because you are that important. In God's eyes, under God's own expectations, you are saints. For you to inherit the power and the kingdom of Jesus you only need to be who you are. We are that important to God. We are one-eyed teddy bears. We are shredded pieces of fabric calling ourselves blankies. We are broken pottery filled with gold. We are flawed for sure, but highly valued. I want us to remember, on All Saints Day especially, whenever we think we don't have enough to give to God or one another, to remember that we are still in the best of company. If you think you're not good enough, know that your faith overcomes your doubts, dear St. Thomas. If you think you don't hold enough value, know that the lies humans tell each other will never diminish the truth of who you actually are, dear Saint Mary Magdalene. If you think you'll never be wise enough, know that your ability to listen is more blessed than your ability to be heard, dear Saint Moses. If you think you're not holy enough, 
so much so that you run away from God's call on your life. Please know that you are never so far that God can't still care for you. Dear St. Jonah, if you think you're not perfect enough, know that your faithfulness is stronger than your fears. Dear St. Mary the Virgin, we are all saints, not because we're perfect or always righteous or blindingly holy or saints because God needs us to be. Because God called us to be together in a community of citizens who care for each other in the most glorious, uproarious, absurd way. God has picked each vocation, each calling, each gift you have is yours to use for God's glory and our combined joy. We can leave the perfection to God and the power to Jesus and start this day, this second chance, this transferred day for all of us saints to follow the Holy Spirit as she guides us through the streets of our world, not waiting for the streets of heaven, but to be present now and walk with others who are called and blessed and flawed, and still saints. Amen. <laughs>